Essential Math Skills in A-Level Biology with Dr. Biology. Hi everybody, it's Dr. Biology here and this is Essential Math Skills for A-Level Biology and I'm going today to be looking at using logs or logarithmic scales in biology. So using log in biology, well the first thing to say is that obviously when a set of measurements is spread over several orders of magnitude, plotting a graph is difficult because of the large range. It's hard to read individual data points. So let's have a look at this um, example. So you've got number of cells against time for a culture of E. coli. And you can see up to about 100 minutes, it's very difficult to work out the actual number of cells from that graph. Um, and then you can see that it increases rapidly, but we, we really don't know what's happening before 100 minutes. So it can be it can be better to plot the numbers on a logarithmic scale. So here's the, ex the graph from last time, and then here is the log 10 number of cells against time for a culture of E. coli. Also, the points are evenly spread as well. So um, you can see that it's spread out the points so it's easier to read. So the question you need to ask is, how? How do we do that? How on earth do we work out the log 10 scale? Well, I'm going to show you with a calculator. Right, okay, so here we have uh, a Casio ClassWiz. This is my preferred um, calculator. There are lots of other calculators around which will, which will do exactly the same thing. Uh, so you can see on the right here is the population is the number of cells over time, and then the log 10 number of cells. Well, it's quite simple to work out the log 10 number. Um, you would press this button here, okay, so log, and then you go 10 and then the right button, and then put in the population as a number of cells. In this case, it's one, and that would equal zero. So let's see if that's correct. Yep, zero, there we go. Uh, just clear that. Let's do the next one. So log 10, and then two, and that would give us naught point and many, um, decimal point, many uh, numbers after the decimal point. So I'm just going to go with the first one, 0 0.3. Okay, there we go, 0 0.3. So what I would like you to do now is get your calculator and you're going to actually work out the rest of them. Okay, so please do pause the video now and have a go. Right, let's see how you got on. So we can now plot that into a graph. And the graph would look like this, okay? So you can see that it actually shows the data really, really well, and it shows it well spread out. So um, as you can see, it's better to plot this type of data, usually related to the growth of things like microbes, where you might have large numbers or large populations and putting it into a logarithmic scale. Let's have a look at a few questions um, and use how we use this graph to answer those questions. So let's use this graph to work out the actual number of cells. So what you can you can do is convert the values you read off a log 10 graph back using base 10, which is, which is either 10x or log minus one on your calculator. I'm gonna show you that in a second. So let's determine the population of cells at 150 minutes. Well, the first thing you're going to need to do is uh, get a ruler and you're going to need to draw a line and where it uh, bisects the um, line of best fit, you will then put it across to the log 10 number, which in this case I'm going to say is 2.25. So let's have a look to see how you would do that on a calculator. So here's my calculator. So I'm going to use the um, what we call the anti-log. So I'm going to uh, use shift and then that thing there. So there's the 10 and then you put in 2.25 and that equals 177.8. Well, I'm going to do it to three significant figures. So I'm going to say the answer is 178. 
This next example shows a table showing the population counts of Vibrio bacteria after an initial inoculum at time zero. Um, obviously, the number of cells per centimeters cubed, they, there is obviously a lot of cells. So you're going to use the log 10. So I'm going to sh quickly show you how to do that again. So here's my class with, so we'll go log 10 and then put the number in, which is 2116000. And that'll give us 6.325. Well, let's do it to two decimal places. So 6.33. OK, so I'd like you to do that for the rest of the data. OK, so you're going to need to pause and get the information now. Right, OK, so here is all of the data. So here's the log 10 of the population of the cells per centimetres cubed. And here is a graph. So this is the log 10 population. And you can see that a line of best fit has been drawn. Now, the one at um, 60, so 60 minutes, to me, that looks like it's anomalous. So I'm going to ignore that in my line of best fit. Right, so here is a question. It says, use your graph to estimate the likely population of cells after 27 minutes. So you're going to have to draw a line of best fit. Well, you've got a line of best fit. You're going to have to draw a line up from 27 minutes and then across. Now, I would make that, um, so that's 6.6, 6, 7, 8, 9, and that's 246. Okay, so 6.96. So what you would do is you'd stick 6.96, the anti-log of 6.96, to find the answer. So the anti-log is shift 10, OK? And then uh, we say it was 6.96. And that will give the number of cells, which in this case is a lot. OK, so we've got what? We've got uh, uh, 9,120,000. 108. Um, depends what kind of um, significant figures you want to go for, but uh, there we go. OK, let's have a look at this question. So it's about uncontrolled cell division can cause tumours to fall. And it says use figure one to calculate the percentage of maximum growth this type of tumour reaches before it can be detected. So you need to look at the graph. It says the size of tumour that can be detected. So that's uh, log 10 of 9, OK? And the maximum growth is 12. So you're going to find, need to find uh, the percentage of maximum growth. So you'll need to use the 10x button on your calculator. So let's get your calculator up. There you go. All right, so I'm just going to get rid of that one so we can fit it all in. OK, so let's put the first number, so 10 to 9. So that is that number. And then divide it by the 10 to 12, which is the maximum. So we're finding the percentage. So there we go. It's that. All right. So times it by 100 and you get your answer, which is 0.1. So that first answer is 0.1%. Right, let's look at this one. So it says figure one can also be used to calculate the age of this type of tumour. At diagnosis, a patient had a tumour of 3.98 times 10 to the 11 cells. Calculate the age of the tumour. It says you will need to use the log 10 button on your calculus, calculator. So it's telling you what you need to do. OK, so let's put the log 10. So log 10. And then we're going to put that big number in, which is 3.98. And then you can use this button down here times 10 to the 11. OK, and that tells us 11.599. So let's say 11.6. We have to go back to our graph and look up 11.6. OK, so here I've drawn the line for you. Not very well. So um, it's 11.6. Um, and then where it bisects the line, you go downwards and it tells you the answer in years. So in this case, I'm going to go for 4.6 years. OK, so here is another graph. It shows the log 10 number of bacteria in bladder and you've got different groups. 
Um, this is related to a longer question, but I've just kind of used this question because it's got a good um, log question in it. And it says, calculate the percentage difference in actual numbers of bacteria in group A compared with group R. So the actual number of bacteria can be calculated from the log 10 value by using the 10x function. So anyway, so A, I'm going to go for, well, it's 1.2, let's say 1.27. So, okay, so I need to shift 10, 1.27, and that will give me 18.62. So I'll write that down. Okay, and now for R, so R, I'm going to go 2 point, so it's 8.5, so about 2.85. So there we go, so 2.85, so that equals 707.9, so I'm going to round that up to 708. Right, so the question then says, um, calculate the percentage difference. So I'm just going to have to work out the percentage difference. So 18.62 divided by 708 and times it by 100. OK, and it gives me that, which is that. So I'm going to now um, do 100 minus 2.63. which is 97.3% or 97.4%. So that would be the answer. Right, okay, so hopefully that's helped. That's a whistle-stop tour through log 10 and anti-logs and looking at logarithmic scales in graphs. I hope you've found it useful. I'll see you soon.